By the end of 1825, Sir Walter Scott's finances had reached such a perilous position that a trust took over his farms, his Edinburgh house, and his earnings. His wife had neither the constitution nor the temperament to accept such a change, and her health, not robust, gradually deteriorated. These extracts from Sir Walter Scott's journal deal with the death of Lady Charlotte in 1826. May 15. Receive the melancholy intelligence that all is over at Abbotsford. Tuesday, 16 May. She died at nine in the morning after being ill for two days. Easy at last. For myself, I scarce know how. I feel sometimes as firm as the bass rock, sometimes as weak as the wave that breaks in it. I am as alert at thinking and deciding as I ever was in my life. Yet, when I contrast what this place now is with what it has been not long since, I think my heart will break. Lonely, aged, deprived of my family all but poor Anne, impoverished, an embarrassed man. I am deprived of the sharer of my thoughts and counsels, who could always talk down my sense of the calamitous apprehensions which break the heart that must bear them alone. Even her foibles were of service to me by giving me things to think about beyond my weary self-reflections. I wonder how I shall do with a large portion of thoughts which were hers for thirty years. I suspect they will be hers yet, for a long time at least. But I will not blaze cambric and crepe in the public eye like a disconsolate widower, that most affected of all characters. Thursday, May 18. Another day, and a bright one to the external world again opens on us, the air soft and the flowers smiling and the leaves glittering. They cannot refresh her to whom mild weather was a natural enjoyment. Searments of lead and wood already hold her. Cold earth must have her soon. Friday, 19 May. We speak freely of her who we have lost and mix her name with our ordinary conversation. This is the rule of nature. All primitive people speak of their dead, and I think virtuously and wisely. The idea of blotting the names of those who were gone out of the language and familiar discourse to those to whom they were dearest is one of the rules of ultra civilization which in so many instances strangle natural feeling by way of avoiding a painful sensation. The Highlanders speak of their dead children as freely as of their living. It is a generous and manly tone of feeling, and as far as it may be adopted without affectation or contradicting the general habits of society, I reckon on observing it. On Friday, 26 May, with the funeral over, Sir Walter Scott writes, I will go to town on Monday and resume my labours. I have not leisure to indulge the disabling and discouraging thoughts that press on me. Dull, dropping cheerless has the day been. I sat in my own room, dawdling with old papers, which awaked as many as stings as if they had been the nest of fifty scorpions. Then the solitude seemed so absolute. My poor Charlotte would have been in the room half a score of times to see if the fire burned and to ask a hundred kind questions. Well, that is over. And if it cannot be forgotten, must be remembered with patience.